Hi, my name is Francisco and I'm a master's student at Instituto Superior Técnico. I'm going to talk to you about my thesis, which is on quantum perceptrons. Before we can understand what quantum perceptrons are and why we should care about them, we need to understand what a perceptron is and what we mean by quantum. The perceptron was one of the earliest models of neural networks, which are models of computation based on our understanding of how the brain works. Neural networks are composed of neurons, modeled by an activation function that decides in which of two states they are in, firing or resting, and of synapses that connect these neurons. Neural networks are a part of the broader field of machine learning, which tries to give computers the ability to learn. Over the past couple of decades, machine learning has had a tremendous impact on our lives, performing remarkably well on tasks as diverse as image recognition, medical diagnosis, and natural language processing. Quantum mechanics is a physical theory that describes nature at very small scales, such as the atomic scale and smaller. It turns out that things of this size behave very differently from things of our size. One example of this is that of superposition. So, what is superposition? At the macroscopic scale, everything has a well-defined state. Take, for instance, position. I am here, you are there. There is no doubt about this, and we both agree that it is impossible for me to be here and there at the same time. However, this is not true at a very small scale. Quantum particles may not have a well-defined position. Instead, their position is given by the sum of several possible positions, with each of these being weighed by a complex factor, known as the amplitude. This is what we call a quantum superposition. Every quantity relating to a quantum particle, not only its position, can be given by a superposition. This includes, for instance, their momentum and their energy. Superposition does not last forever. When there is a measurement of a quantum system, the superposition collapses. This means that the system is reduced to just one of the states in the superposition. The probability of the system collapsing to a given state is related to that state's amplitude in the superposition. Now that you understand what superposition is, we can start to think of how it might be used for computation. As you probably know, computers speak binary, the language of bits. A bit can be in one of two states, 0 or 1. On the other hand, a quantum bit can be in a superposition of 0 and 1. This is usually known as a qubit, and quantum computing is based on their time evolution, which is dictated by quantum operators. Acting with quantum operators on qubits gives rise to interference effects. This means that the amplitude of some of the states in a superposition will cancel out, while the amplitudes of others will add up. This results in the probability of the qubit collapsing to some states being reduced and to others being increased. The idea behind quantum computing is then to lay out quantum operators in such a way that the amplitude of the wrong answers to a problem interfere destructively and cancel out, while the amplitudes of the right answer reinforce each other. By doing this, certain tasks can be completed much faster in a quantum computer. We have seen two very distinct paradigms of computation. Neural networks, in particular perceptrons, and quantum computing. Seeing the massive impact that neural networks have had, and the exciting possibilities brought by quantum computing, two questions come to mind. Is it possible to combine these two paradigms, and can this give us faster algorithms? At first glance, this does not look like an easy task. Perceptrons have nonlinear dynamics, whereas the evolution of a quantum system must be linear. Finding a way to conciliate these two different realities by coming up with a model for a quantum perceptron is the main goal of this thesis.